loading. Loading. All right. Uh, so I believe we're going to get Slade versus Dark Falcon right now. Yep. Um, winner of this place, Ray. Winner of that place, Teju. Three, two, one. Okay. Uh, now, this is actually a matchup that I personally have played quite a bit because uh, <clears throat> I've, I've played against Marshall and other... Uh, other Belmont players as well. And it's, it ends up becoming a very interesting match, mostly focused around Yoshi's aerial mobility because Yoshi has the best aerial mobility in the game. He's just super duper fast in the air. And <clears throat> that means that he is going to want to use that mobility to get through the blizzard of projectiles that the Belmonts are going to be trying to throw out. And honestly, more so than the projectiles, one of the biggest parts is going to be the aerial itself. The forward air and back air. The angling on it has to be incredibly precise because otherwise Yoshi will just get through it. And the Belmonts, you know, they have up B as a combo break, but for the most part, once Yoshi gets in, he can really mess him up. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're seeing at the start of it. Well, right now, at the very least, Dark Falcon has done a pretty good job of keeping Yoshi out. I mean, range is certainly going to be the name of the game for most of Belmont's matchups, and part of what makes them so uh, most of his matchups so doable. But once once Slade gets in, that's going to be a tricky one. But that axe, it, it looks like he was expecting some sort of air dodge away, but axe still covers the, the do-nothing option, so we take those as... Dark Falcon now puts Slate at 173, and he can really start putting on the pressure and the axe coming through. The new you thought neutral getup was safe, but not really. Well, so one thing is that because Yoshi has double jump armor, he does not have to deal with the real horror at the ledge that almost every other character does. As we see, he can jump through cross. He can jump through the uh, the big thing is the holy fire. His armor can get broken if the forward smash is thrown out in the middle of it. Uh, but even then, he usually just gets enough knockback because he gets the reduced knockback that he can just re-grab a ledge and he's taken some percent, but he can at least reset the situation and not just die. Uh, so figuring out an effective way of once Yoshi is on the ledge, how to actually convert that into stock, it's going to be huge for Dark, uh, for Dark Falcon. Yeah, I love the patience that Dark Falcon's really been exploiting, but if you pick too many defensive options, eventually they're going to get run down, and that's kind of what Slade has been doing all night. Part of the reason he's in fourth place right now is his capacity to run down rolls. So Dark Falcon's really going to have to shake up some of his defensive game plan if he wants to prolong some of his stocks even further. It's not working thus far as a couple resets in, and, and he's now at 60, now 80%. Slate firing way back into this game. Holy mo- <laughs> What a quick succession of damage, but that's just how Yoshi works sometimes. He floats around, he does what he can, and then he gets in and blows you up for a hundred, and Dark Falcon really has to limit some of these approaches if he's going to sustain his lead or you know, even still take this set. Long set to go, though, and- the down angled whip is really making Slay currently pretty afraid. As, all right, yeah, the run up up smash won't work twice, at least not yet. Axe is coming through. The cross had just returned, so he couldn't throw it out, which means neutral is reset, but kind of by Dark Falcon's own hand. He's yeah, down this whip is the sort of thing where, oh, if you are Dark Falcon, you have to really carefully time those axe throws. Uh, right there, actually. I think that even broke armor and he still just died. I mean, it's Yoshi at like 189, <laughs> getting hit by axe. But nonetheless, okay, so with the, with, uh, the way things are shaping up at the ledge, he, uh, Dark Falcon needs to find a way to shut down just double jumping and throwing out the egg and holding off on the axe and instead throwing it like this here. Yeah, not being it being the first projectile is probably going to be an effective way of at least that threat shutting down that option. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, I mean, he's living to 140 for a reason. Does he down tilt out of the corner? No, he he sees the space that Slade gave him and takes it and only only really trying to be aggressive when he knows it'll land. That's kind of the, the mark of a good defensive player. Like, you're, you can't be swinging recklessly and allowing your uh, allowing your zone to get penetrated so, so quickly. As these up air is so dangerous, but once again, fighting out of the corner, 
And Dark Falcon keeps it, keeps the ground a minefield and keeps the center a dangerous spot to be. Retakes positioning with the with the back throw off stage. <laughs> the, the axe was narrowly avoided thanks to the B reverse. But at 155, he's almost gonna get lapped right now. A uh, Nair comes through. And still, still ends up making yeah, it. Yeah, Yoshi neutral air at the. Oh, I'm surprised he's going for forward air. Neutral air is usually a. It, it's honestly a really good idea to use the wave bounce to position Yoshi right under the ledge, and then just do a rising neutral air. Uh, if the Belmont tries to go for, but that's gonna do it. But if the Belmont tries to go for an upbeat, oh, sorry, the uh, the tether rather, just a long lasting hitbox that can very often intercept. What a perfect spot to be in this uh, <laughs> in this position because he throws the axe he throws the holy water this holy water down here i'm gonna back up a little bit this holy water down right here oh, come on axe lasts so long this covers this entire spot which means i mean he's not gonna go to ledge now there's a holy water there so he has to head forward Ready? and that only gets him caught in perfect spot to where the axe is yeah, it's important to remember that Yoshi has fantastic aerial mobility, meaning that as the Yoshi player, you have to recognize the hold. See the fact that, you know, oh, yeah, no, that zone is not tenable because of the holy water, but there's an axe that's probably going to be coming at me. There's this tiny little, you know, needle head in between the two, and really doing well in this matchup requires finding those small openings and just using your superior air mobility to go right in there and then just because once you actually get in on him as we've already seen it just it's kind of a slaughter yeah that it's it's not so much getting the hit that's really been the problem for well it's not so much doing something off the head that's really been the problem for spade it's getting that first hit like he was able to do 48 in a blink of an eye but when's he going to be able to do his next 48 the world may never know and if dark falcon has his way never <laughs> so we'll have to see what uh what new ways he can mix up his approaches be or if he can find a find new tools to reset some of his resources i mean that's why we're on ps2 but that reverse cross is proving mighty dangerous and the the minefield is it's looking troublesome now, one thing is that actually, oh, I like the, the option there, but Yoshi can do this. It's sort of a, a little bit of a hard technique to do, but if he, so normally when Yoshi does like a, uh, like a jump, perfect coverage there, uh, but normally when Yoshi does like jump egg, the momentum like shoots him up to like the, like, like double jump height. Like, so uh, the way, if you want to throw out eggs in neutral while staying in the air, the way to do it is you do a short hop, then fast fall, and immediately throw your egg. And that's actually something where by doing that, it creates a very different angle uh, that oftentimes can actually go over the crosses or get around the holy water. So uh, that might be something worth exploring, um, different ways of using the egg while staying mobile. And it will absolutely be huge in the latter half of this game. Not only just being able to utilize eggs to still provide pressure, but staying mobile. Because, I mean, Belmonts have a hard time catching up to people, and that's part of why they always want to have that lead. Like, these whips are super dangerous, but you don't feel as bad about them when they're retreating with the whip and you have the lead, you can willingly take the space that you're given. The egg doesn't climb with the ax though, and that's gonna be the stock. And now we're in the other, we are still in the other side of the coin though. How can Slade maintain his lead? Can he maintain his lead? The world may soon know, especially with egg blades like that. You, you've seen him uh, earlier in this game, the prominence of his mix, his uh, punish game out of the egg lay. We'll just have to see if it keeps going. Oh no, quick wave land out of there. Keeps Dark Falcon alive for how much longer? At 144 after all of this. A good upbeat to get the damage as you can. And at this point, Dark Falcon is more like playing the game for uh, playing the long game a little bit. You're trying to set up for your third stock because you know that this this is gonna drop really soon. So take what punishes where you can, 
that, that being said, okay, there he finally finds the anti-air up smash, but Yoshi can struggle to kill. Uh, I like the fact that right before this, um, Yoshi was, sorry, uh, Blade rather had been throwing out uh, a lot of those neutral bees to dissuade him from the shielding. The axe. The axe took his armor. Okay, I'm not. Okay, well, Dark Falcon is certain is certainly certainly back into this game uh, with that uh, with the axe breaking the double jump armor and stuffing out the jump rather quickly. Now, if you're in a spot like this for Slade, you really gotta start worrying about that lead that's slowly diminishing. Now only at one percent, uh, completely gone. Now the entire momentum is on his side of a. A holy water to block the ledge, <laughs> the down air off the egg. You were here. A couple, a couple spots away. Man, Dark Falcon has suddenly took a game that was like he was at, entirely at a deficit for a good long while, and is now just playing around Slade's uh, aerial game like he's swatting a fly, just pushing ever so steadily and making sure to hold center as much as he can. That's a huge punish that he doesn't go. He still is retreating back to center, which, hey, center stage is where is where games are won in many, many a position. And especially if you're Belmont, you don't want to be giving that up for even a chance to find a kill. Because once you do, things like this start happening. Good coverage, though, on that part. You're sending the, uh, the cross forward and the back air to, and the back air to punish the Yoshi Bomb. Not quite enough, though. That Yoshi double jump is gone. The axe just missing, but Slade is Slade is peppering with eggs. He doesn't want to give this up as much as the next guy. But now that he's at a deficit, this we're not going to go to time. But Dark Falcons can, can certainly start playing the clock a little bit. Dash out to cover the roll. Everything's starting to come out, uh, come out for Dark Falcon as long as he can punish this landing, which he does. The initial dash. Slade really wanted to get back to center. He really wanted to find his way forward. But that center stage Belmont and especially that F tilt is just so, so hard to overcome. Like, right there. Yeah, there we are. Oh, let it go. We let it, we let it fly. The cross is coming. He is... Oh, he's in initial dash, and you cannot shield an initial dash, so that's a free punish on the overextension. And when you're at 177, almost anything will kill. But we still run it back. Slade says, no, no, no. We're not going anywhere else. This is the time. This is the place. This is my moment to take this and make it a reverse 3-0 if he can. Dark Falcon certainly has other plans trying to, trying to conceive a date with... Uh, with Utopian right in Losers Finals. Also, shout out to Proton for the subscription. We appreciate you. Yeah! <laughs> and... <Yeah! Woo! laughs> so, yeah, we got Dark Falcon. So, now it's kind of starting the same way that uh, that Game 2 did. An early lead for Slade, and that's certainly a boon for the Yoshi. For, for the Yoshi, like, as long as the less you have to approach and the more you can start like counter punching with things like nair out of shield like those are the huge benefits those are what you want to use to uh, to really start your stuff because heading in on the pretty accurate whip thus far we see a couple up airs come out from dark falcon those are what is going to turn the tide uh, the turn turn the tide of damage and they absolutely have thus far a whole 10 percent up now even more Dark Falcon, yeah, yeah. respecting the reverse cross, but these axes have done their work, and now they keep on doing them. Tilt input cross, the coverage yeah. on the uh, on the neutral getup. That is that's been so good for Dark Falcon thus far. I saw. The yeah. Now one thing is that Yoshi can be using his double jump from the ledge more. Uh, oh, really good right there, deep edge guard, but uh. For the most, like, like the like in that cross, late cross, 
is pretty much going to... Yoshi's just going to eat through that every time. And really, even though you take damage from it, sometimes just getting out of that bad situation, especially at those higher percents, where there's the threat of it being converted into a kill, it's worth it just to eat the hit. Yeah, for sure. But so much of this game has been, like, Slage trying to mitigate punishes. And he's been doing a pretty fine job of this. We see a couple Nairs coming across the stage. But I feel like Dark Falcon just always finds the right hit to suddenly turn one little swat into a ledge trap or into just him sitting at center and a Yoshi without a jump just missing the anti-air up till that's, that's that basically resets neutral but with dark falcon in center he's certainly playing a comfortable one good overextension on spades part though these forward airs have been huge when he lands them just a little bit inconsistent which has kind of been the name of the game thus far for slay like just big punishes big openings but you're not always getting as much as you want uh, off of each each one of them which is both good on Dark Falcon's part, and perhaps a little frustrating on Spades. Ooh, that backer will do it, though. Alright, huge yeah. stuff so, from Slade. I will say that Slade has been doing a fantastic job playing around this shielding opponent. Normally, that's something that Yoshi can really struggle with. His dash grab is pathetic. He doesn't really get much <laughs> off of his throws. So, finding ways to either pressure the opponent's shield, catch them dropping shield, or as we've seen him do very frequently, oh, okay, um, as we've seen him do very frequently, uh, use that neutral B. Between all of those particular options, uh, it feels that Dark Falcon is not comfortable shielding, even at these higher percents. Or rather, he shouldn't be. That was such a cute mix-up, though. I mean, we've seen him do it before, where it's like, yeah, Yoshi's throws at this percent, I'm not getting anything. So I'll just pummel until you break out and try to get you to hold the mix, which, hey, that's, that's kind of what it's there for. For those of you who don't know, uh, it's not a mix-up at all. <laughs> I mean, no. But it's, like, <laughs> simple, you are... The simple answer is that after the grab release, because you just put two in front of him, and Yoshi does have a frame three jab. Uh, so what you do is you shield because he cannot re-grab you after the grab release, so you shield. And if he does go for the drown bait trying to break your shield, you react to that and you roll up from it. So, uh, as much as I, I, back in the uh, Smash 4 days, I used to lie to people and say it was like a 50-50. Saying, oh, oh, you either wow. shield or you get <laughs> jab up smash. That's what I would tell people. Um, because it turns out it's, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> you're allowed to just give people false information to help yeah, you in, in, in win. <laughs> I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. But propagating misinformation is where Smash Twitter... And that's what Smash Twitter's for, not, <laughs> not this. <laughs> not the in-person Smash. Not the in-person. No, no, no. <laughs> Still... Good stuff from Slade's part. Uh, even with the grapply stuff, like you do have to be prepared to like do something afterwards because if you're recklessly trying to like get out of that spot, yo, she's gonna yo, she's gonna blow you up for it. So it's it's all a matter of preparation and counter preparation. As Dark Falcon, okay, go into Lilac uh, again for the second time as a counter pick. Again, in theory, this stage isn't too bad, but in practice, it's been a little hit or miss. <laughs> Mostly miss. In fact, entirely miss. It's 1-0. Oh, yeah. and 1 that's part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he seems to enjoy going here. I mean, one thing about Yoshi on the stage is that his eggs travel at kind of this beautiful trajectory <laughs> around the... Uh, the whole like as you're seeing this is this beautiful trajectory around the whole stage um and uh, there are some other things about it where the slant can actually help him out with certain auto cancels that maybe he wouldn't normally have access to on flat uh so we might see a little bit of that if he wants to be extra but for the most part i think we're going to be seeing a projectile heavy game similar perhaps more so than we've seen in the, in the past few rounds these guys have played Ooh, but it 
I mean, with a start like this, you really have to consider um, that the Dark Falcon gameplay for this stage has largely been stand at the proper angle where cross covers the stage, but you're still protected by the downward slope. But in, in concept, though, these even platforms make Yoshi a lot more comfortable than it seems because he can constantly find ways to reset his jump and he can constantly find ways to extend his juggles. And that's really what Slade has been uh, been successful on thus far in this game. Like these, the B reverse off the platform into Egle, like he's done that three or four times already, and it's all worked. What what can you do except stop shielding? But you can't stop trying to take center because you're down this this first stop. So I mean, Slade is just currently playing that I the. <laughs> playing the rock, paper, scissors thus far of this game one so well and taking advantage of that lead. These aggressive forward airs as a means of like overcoming from certain spots and getting out of disadvantage and getting out of uh, the, the ledge pressure. But if he feels like he needs to chill out, these side platforms have been perfect. Side platforms have been perfect for him. See a couple anti airs coming through, and it's Slade yet again is just really in the driver's seat, retreating with another wave line onto the side onto the side live at platforms. Dark Falcon looks like he's in a like he's in a strong pos uh, spot, oftentimes positioning wise, but I can understand the feeling of him wanting to always try and get a little more, do a little more because. Now, now Slade is really starting to overstay his welcome on this th first stop. And, oh, okay, there he goes, closing it with another down angle back air. An overzealous down smash, but when you're at 170 and uh, <laughs> up and releasing your shield like that, I guess you have, you have the time to do so. Couple crosses to cover center. Again, not impossible, or particularly if he gets to minimize how many times Yoshi interacts with him. And damage is damage. But jump uh, jump holy water is certainly punishable and not not much extra credit on <laughs> on Dark Falcon's part as he's got a long way to go to try and make this comeback. Yeah, we are seeing I'm liking the the sort of the fact that Dark Falcon can exert pressure from pretty much across the state throwing out these holy waters that will just travel you know a galaxy in order to land on the other side here so it seems that right now at the very least he's trying to not engage uh in those close quarter distances trying to keep his distance and the fact that uh the fact that slade had oh man but the fact that slade had the lead meant that he was inclined to give him that space and i think that actually perhaps was to his detriment as what was once a huge huge lead now is looking kind of manageable for dark falcon to actually make this comeback yeah i mean sorry to interject but like that was huge and it's the type of play that won him game two effectively it brought him back into game two which allowed him to win game two and again no way okay the small ceiling has really been the the added X factor that has only reared its ugly head until right now. Down to one uh, goes for, can set up for some uh, reaction uh, opportunities, but Dark Falcon doesn't do anything because he has this, uh, he's basically brought it back to even and put the ball in Slade's court. It's like, all right, what are you gonna do about this game suddenly being very, very losable? Axe has come through, jump has been used. Great grab on Tar Falcon's part. He's uh, he's playing center, and he has been abusing Slade's uh, impatience to get back in. He'll take eggs all day, but it's yeah. it's gonna be a long time for Slade to find this kill with how Dark Falcon's playing. Max, oh that up he was. Uh, that up he got him killed. I don't know. I want to know what that up he was supposed to be. Uh, but definitely, I am almost certain that was a missed input. And after playing, honestly, really, really well, like, fantastically making that comeback so, so within his grasp, to then have it all just disappear because 
of a miss input. Definitely that's going to make his, uh, that might shatter his mentality as we move into game five. It's, it's been a long set thus far, but for Dark Falcon, basically after game one, you've been playing at a deficit for three games. And you've made some huge plays in clutch moments that have brought games back to just a scrappy final stock, like last hit situations. That one went your way, and one of them didn't. All right. So it looks like we're going to be having uh, Lilac once more. Now, I think, I, the, I mean, as we saw at the end of that last game, that really felt like uh, that's why he picked the stage to begin with, to, to maintain that kind of control once he has mid-stage. However, I do think that a big reason why it had worked at the end of last game, but not at the beginning, is because it kind of does require Yoshi to be scared. Remember how much he was shielding. Remember the fear that was in his eyes. And as we're moving into a fresh game here, there's no guarantee that Slade will be that scared of him. I mean, oh, as we see right there, almost ended his stock instantly. If anything, Slade has every right to be feeling uh, feeling good about himself towards uh, in this game uh, five. He's now successfully taken two games, one very scary one, and one that just only boosted, <laughs> basically boosted your ego a little bit. But this is where this is where money's made, right? It's just all the all the commentator isms that i can throw around like it's if you got anything in your back pocket now is the time those angled up f smashes will start will certainly be bigger punishes on whenever uh, whenever slate is caught by the holy water but i can see slate starting to want to pace his game a little bit slower but it, but his return to stage game has left a lot to be desired as going to yeah. those side platforms can only go to, you can only get away with that so much yeah that was kind of rinse repeated just three times in a row and dark falcon catching it every time oh wow fantastic di I mean, it does mean he will be surviving that but all right uh fantastic roll read there in general uh slade does a really good job recognizing those uh, defensive habits, those panic options, and he has been reliably punishing them, which is really big, especially against a character where if you're a Belmont, once you get hit, you start panicking. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's <laughs> one touch can be death, regardless of matchup situation or character. But at the same time, one touch can be stage control for Dark Falcon if he gets that touch at all. Okay, Slade with these huge combos and the and the resets once he gets back to the ground. Uh, your offensive capabilities really have to shine through in this matchup. And despite the, the haymakers that are coming out from Slade, he's got a really good sense of when Dark Falcon is going to be feeling a little bit more... Uh, touch and go a little bit more scared with some of these spots which is why and when in a pinch this is where he retreats to just go to the go to the slant go to the ledge or not all the way to the ledge and start throwing out those items to make slade feel that pressure but right now there is no sign of worry on slade's face although <laughs> slade he's been trying to scout out that role for quite a while and you know, now that he's at 110%, he can't just quite as confidently run out as run at his opponent, you know, hoping that they're just going to roll. Yeah, he has to really start that. Alright, in the end, he does manage to pick it up with that up air. But if you are slayed at this point, it's really tough to try and extend a lead here. Ooh. It's a tough spot, but one that Dark Falcon is in a much better given how this game uh, began. It's that, oh, this is why you up smash, but no jump thanks to the armor, but he backs off anyway. And, like Recognizing uh, on hit spots is going to be a little bit troublesome, or particularly online. So Slade gets away from danger with only at 172, or only at 172. Death will cover it regardless. It's 30%. This is about one combo. This game is effectively even going into its final, final stop. Right. Hold, holding center. The, 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 
the neutral of this game. It, it's been Slade on a side platform, Dark Falcon underneath in between two of them. Let's see how they see how they handle it. Right now, initial edges to Dark Falcon, but one good swat from Yoshi. Holy, that almost was a clean as hell reset. Uh, now, go ahead, man. What, like, what you got oh, for me? Yo, that, he has not gotten touched. He did not get touched. That and that was zero to death. Wow. At no point during that entire time did Slade actually connect any hit on his last duck. He tried so hard, but in the end, it didn't even matter. Just. Solid stage control, the ability for Cross just to cover these platforms and even go through the some of the lip of the stage and making sure to angle that up that F smash a little bit higher and stand at a proper angle. So yeah, that I'm not sure what that down tilt was, what he was looking for with that down tilt. Um, like it felt like a lot of the times he was actually doing a really good job of knowing when to just commit and run in. I think at the very end there at that last stock, that was another one of those situations. Uh, he had started throwing out the holy water, so if he had just not stopped, if he had just kept barreling forward, he would have been able to close the gap and actually punish that particular projectile throw. But anyway, good stuff to Slade, uh, making it all the way to fourth place, but unfortunately, he has to drop out of the tournament, and fortunately for uh, Dark Horse, he's now in Losers Finals, where he has to face off against Utopian Ray, which... That's gonna be, uh... That's a rough one. We 